Welcome back to the Cube. I am still here with Mass, and Joe is back with us as well. What a match! I know you just commentated it. It's, just, it's it was so intense, wasn't it? It really was, and it was pretty much how we expected it to be in terms of a lot of balls were going to be hit. Kasakina was going to make the points long, and and Shriantik herself is able to play those long rallies. But for me, it was just impressive to see. Shriantek, just her consistency, not necessarily always making every ball or not missing a shot, but her consistent application of being there every single point. And I think that's what was a bit too much for Kasakina today. Yeah, she had, it seemed to me, uh, Mas, that she had that extra ability to hurt Daria in the yeah. end, even though they had really long points. And she just said it was just about putting that last ball over the net, but it seemed to me she was a little extra aggressive. She's a little bit extra aggressive. She's uh, a little bit stronger. Um, I bet you, if you ask them, she, her motivation is a little bit higher than, than Daria because she has the game. She's obviously won the French Open, but I think that, again, Iga Swantek is so impressive that she's followed up uh, with, with now the eighth time in the second week, I believe, after winning the French Open. I, I don't think necessarily winning. I think she just wants to improve her game and she's working with the psychologist and on and So for me, yeah, she's on her way. She's playing great. Uh, she can win the tournament for sure, but some inconsistencies on a hard court might not be her best surface, but she's, she's doing all she can with what she has, and she's relentless in terms of being aggressive to me. Now, Joe, do you agree that this was a closer match than it looks? Because 6-2, 6-2, you could think it was so easy, but it seemed really tough. And what, what was missing for Daria to, to actually be the winner there? Because it seems so close when you look at it. You know, I think, I mean, there was very little in. And the fact that it was over an hour and a half long for literally 6-2, I mean, that's a very few games in a lot of, a lot of minutes, you know, yeah. a lot of time. So there was a lot of balls being hit and a lot of close games. But, um, until maybe the second last and the third last game, all of them were going to juice. And, and so it was, it was just long. But for me, I think it's just that consistency. I mm. think uh, what I said at the beginning, I think Kasakina just wasn't as consistently there mentally and level-wise to be able to challenge Shriontek in the way that she's able to be there constantly. Mm. Uh, I just want to... Uh, yeah, what did, she, what did she write on the camera? Time to make my new... PB. PB. At AO. A personal best at yes. AO. Oh. <laughs> it's a really personal shows. best. It's a personal best fourth round so far. Is I think it? so, yeah. Okay, that's my maybe. Yeah, it is. Okay. It is. Yeah, yeah. So she's looking Well, it's already her personal best, but she wants to make it higher. It just shows yeah. her mentality out there. But she looked very anxious, Matt. Like it seemed like maybe because she felt that that match was way closer than the score said, but until the end it's, it seemed like a relief almost that she was she was never really in control or, yeah, that it could change any time. I think that's what she talks about that she's working on all the time. But I also think it has to do with every game being so close and every point being fought properly because Actina is not giving. So I think there's a certain stress level in there. Obviously, it's stressful to play a big hitter, but you also know you're going to get some free points with Kazakina. If you find the key, you're going to be able to open the door, but you've got to find it and you've got to keep searching for it. And I think that's stressful. At the same time, if I was her coach, um, her, the new coach, I kind of like that. I kind of like that she cares that much, that she's anxious in a match when she's winning, 6-2, 6-3. Okay, this girl's got something that I really want to work and help her, and I think she can go all the way. And at the end, on the encore interview, it's funny how she mentioned the way that they had the same grip, so she knew what, was, what could bother Kazatkina. What do you think it is, Come, <laughs> fat ball coming fast to this grip, Joe? You um, had also a pretty... Western so, not as no, much. No, I yeah. had a similar. So I yeah. wasn't that far around. I think them, they, them two are a yeah. bit further around. But they both know they can hit heavy balls. They yeah. can, and they can also, I mean, the fact that they hit heavy balls know that the heavy balls are going to come to them as well. So, so it, it is funny that she has that awareness again on how her opponent plays. Yeah. You, uh, Babsy is going to interview her as she walks off the courts. Coming to you, Babsy. Iga, congratulations. I know you want to check the schedule, but first you have to talk to me. Congratulations. It's Thank always you. difficult to play against uh, Daria. You've done extremely well, especially tactically. If I would have to give you a mark, I would give you an 8 today. What nice. would you give yourself? Is it uh, 8 to 8 or 8 to 10? No, no, <laughs> an, an A, actually. Well, in, 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 in Europe it's different, huh? Well, just give me a 1, one to 10, and 10 is the best. Um, what would it be? I would say... Yeah, eight is a good, good, uh, great. Actually, you know, it was it was pretty hard because she was running to every ball, and I know that she can play play great topspin. So, for sure, she's a great defense player. Uh, but I wanted to push her, you know, and 
uh, attack as much balls as possible because you know uh, if I'm gonna put pressure on her, she's gonna start make, making mistakes. So um, I do want to make the same mistakes as I did last year when I lost against yeah. her. So you played unbelievable aggressive with your footwork, but in your shots as well. When are we gonna see Iga a little bit more often at the net? Ooh, um, probably, <laughs> when gonna happen? probably when I'm gonna start with voicing, you know? Because <laughs> uh, for now it's, it's pretty shaky, but um, yeah, we're, we're practicing that, you know? Um, actually, with volleys, um, it's never a good time to practice them because you have other stuff, you know, on a baseline to work uh, on, but step by step, we're, I think, I just need like, uh, I don't know, a few more months uh, to because we're putting more and more volleys to every practice, but um, we're basically focusing on serve and returns because this is where you get most points. But uh, for sure, this is part of the game. I want to improve. Okay, I'll give you a few more months and then we'll cool. check back on that, okay? okay. Uh, fourth round at the Australian Open and you wrote it on the camera. You wanna, I think you want to... Want more now, huh? Well, One doesn't? step further, <laughs> um, or a few steps further, I should say. Three steps, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, that's my personal best here. So for sure, going to quarterfinal is gonna be is, is gonna be great. Um, you know, I'm not really thinking about ranking, so it doesn't really matter that I saved points from from last year. Um, I'm just really pumped up to play and really fresh because uh, it's the beginning of the season. So I just wanna you know go forward and push. Before I let you go, uh, we're not talking about tennis. Last question: Are you really reading Gone with the Wind? I the I did last year. Oh, um, you did last year, not yeah, this year. Yeah, it was it was yeah. I mean, people were talking about it because I cried for like thirty minutes when I finished it. <laughs> now I'm watching uh, some sensation books and I'm trying to catch up with Marvel movies. So okay, yeah, something well, different now. Good luck with that as well. You're looking Thank very you. strong, and I'll catch you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love it. She's so she's so intense and a perfectionist as well. And her answer is mad. Like love it. I love it. But I mean, she's really again. And we talk about it so much. She's she's enjoying herself on tour. And there's so much more to it than playing matches and winning matches. And although I do question her on, I don't really worry about ranking points. I don't, I'm not trying to defend what I did last year. Well, I guess you are because you just mentioned it, Iga. But well, you she... have to, right? You have to. You know what you did the last year. So ranking points. They are very important. I think she's aware of it, but but yeah. I, I agree with her because I remember when I was playing, I, I wouldn't think of what I'm defending. Obviously, no. I, I remembered how I did at that tournament the year before. It wasn't that long ago. But it would it was always just about this is another opportunity for me to to get better, to do well. And I think that's what she's that's what she's yeah. enjoying. We've always spoken about that. She loves the process. That's what she's uh, really motivated by. It's really refreshing also to see interviews like this. She seems so innocent. Catching right? up on her Marvels, her Marvel <laughs> films, I like that. <laughs> it's inspiring for all you guys out there that want to do something and want to be the best that you can be. Just never give up because you never know what can happen. You never know who you can inspire and um, who you can influence.